Good afternoon and uh, welcome to another library lunch hour directly from here at the Central Library and Archives located on East 119th Street and 3rd Avenue in East Harlem. My name is Aníbal Arocho. I am the librarian here at the Center for Puerto Rican Studies Library and Archives. And today I'd like to share some recent acquisitions that we've made uh, to our library collection. Um, this is not a comprehensive list of everything we've received recently, um, but this is just a, a highlight of some of the materials that we have. Um, behind me, you can see we have our stacks. We have over 20,000 books related to Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricans and the Puerto Rican studies. Um, so let's get it kicked off with our first title of the day. And our first title of the day is Borinquen Field. And this is by Marta Aponte Alcina. En esta alucinante novela sobre Borinquen Field, nombre original de la base Remy en Aguadilla, Malta Aporte Alcina renueva su compromiso con una literatura nacional indómita y a la vez minuciosamente cuidada e investigada, casi hasta el delirio. Confrontada con tanta desmemoria por diseño y con su habitual maestría imaginativa, la autora los Vestigos de un inventado linaje visionario. So that's uh, Bodinkin Field. It's a novel. Our next one is the summer 2023 volume of the Centro Journal. Um, and this is by the Centro Press. Uh, it's a special issue. Vivas nos queremos, the femicide and gender violence epidemic in Puerto Rico and the diaspora. Uh, guest editors are Diana Aramburu and uh, Tania Carrasquillo Hernandez. The Central Journal, uh, it's available for purchase through the, our website, through um, La Bodega. If you go to our website, go to La Bodega, and you can subscribe to the Central Journal. It's a world-class, peer-reviewed journal uh, relating directly to Puerto Rican studies. Um, it's been around since the 80s, and... It's got a lot of really great articles and a lot of cool special issues are coming up. So I recommend everybody go ahead and see if you can get your, yourself a subscription. Um, next, we have a topic that is very near and dear and interesting to me. It's baseball. So this is a book about Roberto Clemente. Um, and this is by Nestor Dupre Salgado. And this is an interesting take on, the, on Roberto Clemente and his trajectory. Um, en la temporada 1970-71 del béisbol profesional de Puerto Rico, Roberto Clemente dirigió los senadores de San Juan. En la víspera de su consagración como pelotero en el Circo Grande, la cual vendría en la Serie Mundial del 1971 y su entrada en el 1972 al exclusivo grupo de totaleros que habían bateado 3.000 imparables. Era a su vez la despedida del mundo del béisbol de Puerto Rico, el que lo había visto nacer a la vida deportiva como ídolo y el cual vivió con sus tragedias y alegrías, sus miserias y sus glorias. Los meses de octubre de 1970 a enero de 1971, en que Roberto Clemente se, se desempeña en un rol de liderato como manager de los senadores Son la ventana para mirar el mundo de Clemente, su personalidad, su talento, su orgullo, su carácter y sobre todo sus, los rasgos que lo convirtieron en el astro boricua. So if you want to get some insights into that last uh, uh, life of Clemente as a member of the Puerto Rican Baseball League, uh, this is a great title. Next, we have uh, Crónicas del Colapso, Economía, Política y Sociedad de Puerto Rico en el Siglo XXI. And this is by Emilio Pantojas García. Uh, observar a Puerto Rico en las primeras dos décadas, el siglo XXI es como presenciar la implosión de un edificio moderno cuya funcionalidad llegó a su fin. Hemos transitado de la Casa Pobre del Caribe, the Poor House of the Caribbean, a la vitrina de la democracia y el desarrollo a la postmodernidad periférica. Un país de cuarto mundo, como describe Manuel Castells, 
que ha sido marginado de las cadenas de valor global del capitalismo avanzado. El Puerto Rico de operación manos a la obra, el de lo mejor de los dos mundos, colapsó. So there's some interesting insights into the development of Puerto Rico in the 20th, now in the 21st century. So moving on, we have a very cool title. This is uh, from Centro's director, Dr. Jomaira Figueroa. And this is the Spanish language translation of Decolonizing Diasporas. This is Diasporas de Colonizadoras, Cartografías Radicales de Literaturas Afroatlánticas. En el, en el principio fue la relación, tal parecería construir la clave principal de Diasporas de Colonizadoras, un profundo y exquisito trabajo de investigación lectura cuidadosa y reflexión que se publica ahora en traducción al castellano. Este libro se suma a las más enriquecedoras obras de afrocaribeñes afro planteado rumbos de pensamiento fuera de y en oposición al imaginario hispanófilo. Okay. Got here. Next we have another Central Press book also available in the Central Bodega. And this is Diasporic Journeys, Interviews with Puerto Rican Writers in the United States. And uh, this is edited by Carmen Heidi Rivera. And Diasporic Journeys is a collection of interviews on contemporary diasporic Puerto Rican authors publishing and performing throughout the United States and abroad with particular interest in the ways in which history, traditions, geographic dispersal cultural slash national identity and linguistic merging converge in their lived experience and in their writing. So this is a book of interviews of various uh, topics and thematic concerns and taken as a whole, the experiences of uh, these writers in the diaspora. So again, another great title available at the Centro Bodega website. So we have this book by Andrew Strombeck, and this is DIY on the Lower East Side, Books, Buildings, and the Art After the 1975 Fiscal Crisis. In what became a paradigmatic example of gentrification, the Lower East Side's population shifted from working class people to Wall Street traders and ad agents. The transformation occurred in part because of high profile local artists, such as Jean-Michel Basquiat, Keith Haring, Jeff Koons, and Kiki Smith. But Strombeck argues that the neighborhood writers also played a role. Drawing on archival research and original author interviews, he examines the innovative work of Kathy Acker, David Wojnarox, uh, Miguel Pinheiro, Sivere Lotringer, Lynn Tillman, and others, and concludes that these writers still have much to teach us about the changes in the nature of work and the emergence of the do-it-yourself ethos on the Lower East Side. At Centro, we have lots of collections that re relate to the Lower East Side, so there's definitely a through line there. And up next, we have a new memoir that's just released by none other than Felipe Luciano, and this is his memoir, Flesh and Spirit, Confessions of a Young Lord by Felipe Luciano. Uh, his memoir begins when, as a teenage Brooklyn gang member, he's convicted of manslaughter. This pivotal moment changes the trajectory of his life. The American kid raised on Davy Crockett and Superman TV tales emerged from the womb of prison into a harsh, new monochromatic black and white world without the benefit of rose-colored glasses. It was a painful shattering of all his childhood beliefs and realization that he was a poor black Puerto Rican in, a, in white America, clutching onto values that didn't work. So this is, you want to hear about the life history of Felipe and his uh, upbringing and his transition into becoming a founding member of the Young Lords, we have that. Uh, next, we have a biography of 
Ostos. And this is Ostos, la biografía, los días de su madrugada. This is by Marcos Reyes Dávila. Esta biografía de Eugenio María de Ostos nos se ciñe a la leyenda como se ven las constelaciones desde el suelo, ni el retrato de sus luces peregrinas. Aspira a admirar en la pincelada del lienzo o en el punto fino de la imagen como la simbra de la idea de libertad antillana en la palabra, en la animada plática del aula, en la prensa alborotada, aspira a oír en vivo como crépita en el granito de su furia, su lucha por la incan incandescencia de América. So. We have a uh, next title. For any of you Jersey residents, we have a book called Immigrants in Hoboken. And this is by Christina A. Ziegler McPherson. Since peoples from around the globe began to come to America, Hoboken has always been a popular destination for immigrants. People migrated from Ireland, Germany, Italy, Russia, Puerto Rico, and other countries to the city hoping to find opportunity and prosperity for themselves and their families in America. Using Hoboken as a point of entry, many ultimately chose to remain in the Mile Square City as they struggled to establish themselves immigrants classed with one another and with native-born Hobokenites as they influenced the city's politics, economics, religions, and customs. Next, we have... Another great work in translation. This is the translation of Julia de Burgos, La Creación de un Icono Puerto Riqueño. And this is the a translation of the work of Vanessa, Vanessa Perez Rosario, translated by Isabel Zapata. Uh, durante más de 50 años, Julia de Burgos ha evocado sentimientos de identidad y unión entre puertorriqueños y Latinx en Estados Unidos. Vanessa Pérez Rosario va más allá del enfoque trágico de otras biografías de Burgos para examinar la vida de la artista considerando el trasfondo de la cultura puertorriqueña y la compleja historia de la isla y la diáspora, enfocándose en Burgos como escritora y activista. Pérez Rosario profundiza en su desarrollo artístico, su experiencia como migrante, sus luchas contra el colonialismo y la injusticia, eh, injusticia social y sus contribuciones a la cultura literaria y visual latinoamericana. So in many cases, we do try to get, if a book comes out in translation, we try to have the English and Spanish versions in order to provide the greatest accessibility to our patrons. So you'll notice that might be a theme that we, some new books that we have might be books in translation. And to that, and uh, another book that we have in translation is the most recent novel by Esmeralda Santiago. So we have the English and Spanish versions. Um, and this is Las Madres. And we just had an event with Esmeralda Santiago. We had a cafecito event. Um, so if you've missed that, you couldn't attend, that should be up on our YouTube channel shortly if it's not up on YouTube already. Um, and uh, they refer to themselves as Las Madres, a close-knit group of women who, with their daughters, have created a family based on friendship and blood ties. Their story begins in Puerto Rico in 1975, when 15-year-old Luz, the tallest girl in her class dance academy and the only Black one in a sea of petite, light-skinned, delicate swans, is seriously injured in a car accident. Tragically, her brilliant multilingual scientist parents are both killed in the crash. Now orphaned, Luce navigates the pressures of adolescence and copes with the aftershocks of a brain injury. When two new friends enter her life, Ada and Shirley, Luce's days are consumed with aches and pains and her memory of the accident is wiped clean, but she suffers spells that send her mind to times and places she can't share with others. And this next one, the actual book is currently being used in the reading room, but I do have a printout of the illustration from the cover. It is Paloma's Song for Puerto Rico, a diary from 1898. 
And this is by the author Adriana Erin Rivera. Paloma's Song for Puerto Rico was created in collaboration with the Smithsonian Institute's National Museum of the American Latino. Nuestras Voces shares inspiring Latino stories. It is 1898 and the 12 year old Paloma lives in Puerto Rico with her papi, mama, and little brother, Jorge. They are coffee farmers and Paloma loves the goats, chickens, and fruit trees that she helps care for. She also loves music, uh, music, the song of the Koki frogs who sing her to sleep and the melodies from Papi's tiple guitar. But Paloma's world begins to change when United States soldiers invade Puerto Rico, long controlled by Spain. What will happen to their farm, their culture, the island? As Paloma and her family navigate changes they can't control, they hold tightly to each other and hope for a better future. In diary format, Nuestras Voces series profiles inspiring characters and honors the joys, challenges, and outcomes of Latino experiences. And uh, we actually have a really cool event coming up. Um, if you have children, if you're in the New York City area and you have children, you can join us for our Meriendita series, which is um, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Um, you can go to our website and you can... Uh, RSVP to uh, come uh, listen to a read aloud of this title. And um, it's part of a program that's made possible in part due to the support of uh, Charles Schumer, Senator Christian Gillibrand and Representative Adriano Espaillat. So you can go to our website um, and RSVP and you can come and check out the Meriendita and where we feature this book. Okay. Next we have Another baseball book, Play Ball. And uh, again, I'm a big baseball fan. So uh, sometimes I, I overindulge in buying baseball books for the library. But uh, this uh, book by Margaret Salazar uh, Porcio, Adrian Burgos Jr. and Robin Morey is a dual language uh, book and uh, play ball in the barrios and the big leagues takes readers on a journey into the heart and history of U.S. Latina Latino baseball. The extraordinary stories of Latinas Latinos alongside the artifacts of their remarkable lives demonstrate the historic role baseball has played on as a social and cultural force within Latino communities across the nation for over a century, and how Latinos particularly have influenced and changed the game. And another great addition to our books about baseball. A book of poetry, for those of you that like to read poetry. This uh, edition specifically is the 10th anniversary edition of this book by Mara Pastor. And it's Poemas para Fomentar el Turismo. Publicado hace 10 años, Poemas para Fomentar el Turismo parece hablar más sobre nuestro presente que el suyo. Este libro sabe que está siendo escrito en el quiebre histórico de dos eras en la historia del país que marca un antes y un después. Y sin embargo, la autora, quien fuera de unas, eh, que fuera una de estas emigradas, como muchos otros valientes, va contra la corriente y vuelve a su isla devastada a juntar sus manos a la de tantas comunidades que desafían la crisis. Another great work of poetry by Mara Pastor. Okay, this is a pretty interesting book. Um, sometimes we have to, we buy books directly from Puerto Rico and this is one of the titles that we got. And this is Prohibido Cantar Canciones Calpeteadas y Artistas Subversivos en Puerto Rico. And this is by Maggi Madero. Prohibido Cantal es una historia de la represión del negociado federal de investigaciones de Estados Unidos y la policía de Puerto Rico hacia los artistas puertorriqueños. La investigación contó la revisión de más de 30,000 folios de carpetas de subversivos, expedientes criminales de FBI y de la policía contra ciudadanos que apoyaran la independencia de Puerto Rico. 
La muestra de documentos cubrió desde la década de 1940 hasta 1987, más de 40 años de represión política. So if you want to learn a little bit more about Las Carpetas, specifically about musical artists and musicians that uh, were investigated and were, in many cases, harassed by the FBI and by the police, this is a great title. Our next, it's a work by Lourdes Vasquez, Puro Paisaje. And we count with the Lourdes Vasquez papers here at Centro, so we're very proud of that. Los 16 relatos antologados en este libro de la poeta y escritora puertorriqueña Lourdes Vasquez son un, una filagrana literaria que convoca a sumergirnos en, una, en un cuadro revestido de color, misterio, secretos, soledad, búsquedas, erotismo, meditación, exploración o evocación histórica, social urbana o interna y terminan por sorprender, fascinar y despistar por sus inesperados y a veces pavorosos finales. Another great work by Lourdes Vázquez. All right. As you can see, we have a pretty good variety of, of titles this time around. And uh, I like to, to purchase things in, in different genres and different subjects in order to help uh, bolster our collection and build it out in areas that might have been historically underrepresented in the collection. Um, another great title is Tres Sanjuaneras en la época del jazz. Historias de Blanca de Castejón, Mapi Cortés y Olga San Juan. And this is a book by Basilio Serrano. Uh, again, about uh, like books about popular culture, about music, about film. Um, este libro trata un tema que hasta hoy no es muy conocido. Tres jóvenes, las cuales tenían raíces en el viejo San Juan de Puerto Rico al comienzo del siglo XX, logran impresionante hazañas en el cine, teatro y la televisión. Esto cuando la diáspora puertorriqueña era muy limitada y cuando eran pocas las mujeres boricuas que se destacaron en la farándula fuera de su país. So this is definitely one that I am interested in, in reading, um, which is something that's tricky when you're a librarian is you get these books that come across your desk and then you just want to sit there and read the entire book. Um, but in many cases, we just have to give it a quick once over and look through the table of contents, maybe read a chapter or two. But every once in a while, there's a book that I like to dive into, and I think this one's going to be the one for me. Another book of poetry. Uh, uh, quite a few books of poetry. We have a pretty good collection of books of poetry. And this is a poetry anthology. And uh, it's called Viento del Norte, Antología de Poetas Hispanos in Nueva York. And uh, its uh, editorial coordinator is Francisco Álvarez Coqui. Um, Nueva York, ese topos icónico, atractivo y conflictivo. Imán que ha traído a poetas hispanos en los cuatro periodos de la poesía. Moderno, modernismo, modernidad y vanguardia. Eh, postmodernidad y en la actualidad todo lo que en las últimas décadas con su yo poético y su ex existencial abordan este referente urbano plurisemántico de libertad deshumanización magnificencia, capitalismo convivencia multitudinaria discriminación, dolor y alegría so all of the multifold of emotion that comes with living in the city as interpreted as seen through the eyes of uh, various poets from Latin America and uh, the for for our for our interests would be the Puerto Rican poets who include David Cortez Caban, Maritelma Costa, Pedro Lopez Adorno, Milna Nieves and Carmen Valle. But there's a ton of great poets in this book. 
All right, we're reaching the end, and then we're going to be taking some questions, if anybody has any questions. The next title is Whiteness in Puerto Rico, Translation at a Loss. And this is by Guillermo Rebollo Gil. Using autoethnography to examine the social construction of whiteness in Puerto Rico, Guillermo Rebollo Gil draws from artistic, activist, and popular culture registers to examine the multifarious yet often subtle ways race, privilege, shapes, and informs daily life in Puerto Rico. Cross-disciplinary in approach, whiteness in Puerto Rico speaks to the present political moment in the country marked by austerity, disaster capitalism, and protest. All right, Some contemporary thought on these current situation on the island. And the last title that we will be highlighting for today, and again, this is like not at all comprehensive of what we have in the collection, um, is Los Young Lords y Las Panteras Negras, another great uh, topic that is uh, always being requested by patrons is uh, works on the Young Lords. Uh, Los Young Lords y Las Panteras Negras, Divergencias en la Lucha por la Liberación, Francisco J. Concepción Mar Marquez. Los Young Lords, al ser un movimiento de la diáspora puertorriqueña, no pueden reducirse a una mera copia del proyecto de Las Panteras Negras. Esto porque ambas organizaciones tuvieron objetivos distintos a pesar de sus obvias coincidencias. Nuestra hipótesis es que el partido de los Young Lords elaboró una versión radical del nacionalismo negro a través de una interpretación diaspórica, latinoamericanista y tercermundista del conflicto racial en los Estados Unidos. Este análisis implica la confluencia de perspectivas fundamentadas en las teorías de la liberación latinoamericana y la radicalización de la herencia de Malcolm X gracias a la influencia del nacionalismo puertorriqueño heredado de Pedro Luis Campos. So it's an interesting uh, analysis of the Young Lords juxtaposed with the Black Panthers and how their respective ideologies uh, worked. So pretty good uh, analysis here. And with that, we have about 10 minutes for uh, any Q and A's, um, any questions about the library in general, any about any questions about the books that uh, I've highlighted today. Um, I like to say that, you know, these books represent uh, 20 books and over 20,000 that we have in the library collection. Um, we are constantly acquiring new titles, so we try to do at least one of these unboxings uh, once a semester to just highlight some of the titles that we've been receiving over the course of the year. Um, our library catalog exists within the Hunter College library system, so if you want to search our catalog, you can go to library.hunter.cuny.edu and you can look at the Hunter library catalog. If you would like to see any of the books that you've seen here today or explore any other titles that we might have in our collection, you can also make an appointment. Um, we are open Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And you can come and request materials. Uh, we are a non-circulating research library, um, but you are allowed to take photographs and uh, make photocopies of any pages you might need for your personal interests or personal research. Uh, but we encourage you, if you just want to spend an afternoon reading, and many people do, you can come in here and... Uh, and peruse um, both the materials we have in the library, but also the 300 different archival collections that we have here. And many of the books that we receive are the products of research that was done um, using our uh, archival material. So in many cases, you know, the references and bibliographies will reference uh, specific collections from the Centro archives that are then produced and published into a book, which is then purchased and then put on the shelf. So it's a, in many cases like a circular relationship that we have here. Um, so I see that we currently have one question. 
uh, in the Q&A. Um, thank you for this. Very excited to get my hands on these books. Also wondering if you could talk a bit more about your poetry collection. How much of it remains untranslated from Spanish to English? Muchísimas gracias. Well, thank you. Uh, this is from Cristina. Thank you, Cristina, um, for the question. Um, we have a, an extensive uh, poetry collection of poets, both in the diaspora and poets from, from Puerto Rico. Um, I would say uh, there's a large percentage of um, island-based poets that remain not, uh, not in translation. Um, so there's definitely fertile ground there for aspiring translators to go and um, translate some of these works. Uh, we also have a, a great collection of poetry anthologies. Uh, for people that don't know where to start, I always recommend anthologies as a good place to start um, for if we could be interested in, in, in you know, uh, in poetry or in short stories, novels. Um, uh, and of course, we also have representation of the New York and poets poetry movement. Um, again, that's one of the places where the library and the archive is really useful because we do have the papers of Miguel Algarín and Pedro Pietri and other members of the New York and poets movement. Um, we have the papers of Tato La Viera. Um, so you can actually see in many cases that the, the original handwritten manuscripts of these works. Um, and then you can read the published versions as well. Uh, so that's uh, that's something that is unique to, to Centro. Okay. Will there be a list of these books available somewhere? Um, if it hasn't, okay, yeah, and my colleague Kimberly has already answered. Yes, you will. We, these books will be available. Uh, the list will be available on a PDF that we produced and shared with all of you today. Um, if anybody has any additional questions. Um, if you would like to make an appointment, um, there's a form that you can fill out. We don't require people to make an appointment to come to visit the Central Library and Archive, but it always helps if we know a little bit about what you want to come and research. Because in many cases, we can have material waiting for you. We can have books and archival collections at the ready. And um, I believe my colleagues are put, are have been populating the chat with um, all sorts of really great resources while I've been talking. Um, that, in, that might include uh, links to how to make an appointment and the library catalog as well. Another question just popped into the Q&A. Um, thank you for, thanks for this. Do you have any artist books or zines? We definitely have artist books. Um, I believe we have some Lourdes Vasquez, uh, artist books and some other artist books that are, that are in our flat file. Um, we don't have a, a ton of them, but we have, we have a good representative sample of like, I don't know, like a handful of artist books. And we do have some zines as well. We have an extensive, um, collection of periodicals and magazines and including some very short run zines, which uh, are resources that I would recommend if you want to check out, you can email us, um, centro.library at hunter.uni.edu is the email address. Uh, you can reach me directly with any follow-up questions that you might have. Okay. I've been talking nonstop for like 30 minutes. Um, and we've also mentioned our, our hours of operation. So you can know what time you can come in and make an appointment. Yep. Um, someone has some questions I've received in the past or people ask me where we buy our books. So, um, we buy our books from a variety of different vendors. Um, we have uh, databases that we run uh, constant searches for. So we set up um, keyword searches for 
topics within the Puerto Rican studies. And we receive reports of different titles that are available um, through uh, companies like ProQuest. And they get all the uh, the titles um, way ahead of time. <laughs> we also do buy books directly from the island. So, you know, we've uh, bought stuff from Libro 787 in the past and Libreria Norberto. And recently we've been purchasing books from I think I bought the um, Corinthian Field book from Editoriales Emergentes in, on the island. So we buy directly from them. All right, unless there are no more questions, I think that's um, we're going to start wrapping it up now. Um, thank you again, everyone, for attending our library lunch hour about our book unboxing. Um, if any of the books that we mentioned here today are of interest to you, please reach out. We hope that this has been an interesting resource um, for everyone. Uh, we try to keep it varied. We try to have a little bit of everything and just give you a little bit of insight into what goes behind uh, working in a library and purchasing these books for the collection. Um, have a good day, everyone, and we hope to have you here at the Central Library and Archives soon.